Now welcome back home. Because you go to build application for waiting on what they call reward. Then a application will be say it will work well for everybody. Everybody like them. Everybody feel pay money for them. It go make sense when say you know go just feel make them nice. It go make sense when say go feel they work with data for that kind of site. And then that where the fetch API they come in. Don't the reason I'm say how I want to take they get data from Shopify or how I want to take they get data from YouTube. How I want to take they even get information from Twitter, say for example. Now the right video with this for you because for this video I will explain everything we gonna need to know about the fetch API. We're gonna use the fetch API to work with data from another server for another site. I would like to thank everybody we don't they follow me, everybody we don't they subscribe, everybody you guys are the best. But make gonna not forget we get group for now to take join our community for Telegram. We're gonna post different things, we're gonna give our updates, we're gonna even share jobs with someone. So we're gonna become a part of this community because as we start to the build up, now we're gonna grow with us as we grow also. So before we start to write any code at all, I would like make we just go through some slides, make I just explain for now. We don't know waiting the fetch API be some of those of now we even know, but you know to understand. I just want to see whether I have to use this slide. Make we just know waiting a bit before we start to work with them. So okay. Now waiting the fetch API. Fetch API now way for us to they take fetch data or to they collect data or to they request data from internet so not be just internet we even request files or resources from our uh, website or application where they work with as long as we they use javascript we feel use the fetch api fetch api those of them way they used to jquery ajax fetch api they somewhat similar to ram but fetch they more powerful you get power pass it we feel do more things maybe say a, we know if we do before we fetch and the syntax they different it they much cleaner much nicer to the work with okay then it they help us they they perform crud operations what we call, call uh, create read update and delete aka okay, what we, 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 we they call crud operations meaning say you want to create something for a database you want to read something from a database you want to update something on the database or maybe you want to even just delete something from a database now that time you feel they even they use the fetch api even so they do that fetch api in a promise base if you feel perform asynchronous operations on top of that means say we're not going to wait for something to finish before we can't we can move forward before we can run our function than a why they very flexible and very powerful in the coming video itself we go see say we go start to use all those asynchronous code you know understand to so they work with information how fetch they work like if you use fetch api waiting in the help us to do or if you use fetch method waiting in the help us to do how you can go even take the dual so because fetch api in a very now nah, something where they use the request information just know say the most important thing where this fetch api you need the most important thing where they say you need the most important argument where you go need inside this method now the part to the resources or the url or the link where the thing they which usually now like an api way endpoints where you want to make it hit you know understand where you want to make it go you want to make it go an api like you want to make it connect to let's say facebook api or you want to make it connect to twitter api and at that time you go put the twitter or something their api uh, endpoint you go put them for inside here because we they perform uh, http uh, requests we go see they use http methods which we they call them the get the post and the put delete and trace and some other ones where we get we're supposed to say the fetch api if they make a request i don't already explain this before for uh, our first 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 video where we first make where we first make that year that year I first explain, say the computer, you go they send the request, you go they receive a response. You know understand? So then uh, now we don't know what's in the be. Go watch that other video. No worry, go watch that. If you know what's in the be, no worry, I'll make we continue. So what we they do? We say we they fetch that request. All right. We they, we they, <clears throat> I said we they fetch that request. Yes, we they make a request. All right. And when we make that request, we they receive a response. Now that response is they come as an object. And now that response we want to work with now. Okay, then once we don't get that response, that time we go confi they do anything when we want with the response. If you transform the response, if you transform that data, we feel even display the data anyhow we want, we go feel do anything we want with that data. You know, say fetch API now promise based API, right? And meaning say now something we say it must give us a response, it must give us something back, it must give us a result back. Then I always say the promises be. You know, understand? But that it gets waiting with the column as states. So those states now, now we they try to understand. So we do, this is not just image, we're going to take us through the states of how we even work with promises or anywhere where we're going to get promise. Because in the future, you're going to get asynchronous, you're going to get asynchronous functions here and there, you're going to get all these promise based um, um, APIs where you're going to work with in the future okay so what's going to happen say you go whenever you send a fetch request it goes as a promise right and now because it's a promise eh you go it go confit do two things it go fit fulfill or it go fit reject 
the results where we will get. I'm finished this finding. Just to know, say the code will need to fulfill, and when you push that fulfill, you get what we will need to do once the code don't fulfill. You get what we will need to do once the code no fulfill. Then and then you go to attach the dot then method because if you they chain your commands like this, as long as saying that synchronous functions they work with, now that time you go pick on use the dot then and the dot catch. So you go see say dot then they here and the dot catch they here. So if you say oh okay, oh, do something if something happen. If rejection, then do this. If no rejection, then do that. Or if rejection, then catch the rejection. If no rejection, then do this. So once you don't fulfill, oh, you go to work all that things for the background. You go to perform an asynchronous action. Remember, I said, I say async or asynchronous. Now, some people say, if they happen for the background, you never give us results. If they do on your own, you know, they stop anything where they happen for our own code. Our code, see, they run. Everything, see, they run. And then when you finish, you go give us something back. You know, understand? So because you don't set to now, you don't perform something asynchronously for here. Whereas if there was an error, now that time the error will come day here. We say we can't get this error handling because we don't run the dots then or oh, on error, do something or catch the error. Now that time go help us do something. And then finally, if they return again back to us a promise. So once you return that promise, either way, whether we, we get something, whether the, the thing fulfill or reject, it go shall return a promise. You understand? So when it fulfill, it will return a promise. When it rejects, it will return a promise. Either way, it will return that promise. And then you will see the pending result there. Then at that time, where you go feel do the dots then and dot catch. Because inside this callback, where we go feel where we the call and call back, inside the, this dot then, now that time you go confi, they use the values where you get from, from inside here. So any value. Where you get for here, that I go for you inside this dot then and dot catch. So I hope say this don't give you a better understanding on what thing we go to do. Fetch still get some other things where we say it go make sense for us to work with. Because the fetch API they're very powerful. Some other very wonderful developers don't take their time, don't go use the fetch, they build other things on top of the fetch. So they make our lives much easier to work with. And keep in mind that all these APIs also, all these uh, libraries and tools where they here, these axios, these gods, and this node fetch, and many other ones, just keep in mind, say all of them then be promise based let me say the same concept we just discussed for the last slide now they the also they do but then i just brief summary of what they happen so now no good day to confuse you now they hear all those kind of things if now don't hear them before now they confuse then are the whole cocoa of them that then are why we feel even they use them for modern browsers make we know say now waiting with the work we get all these libraries we get these axios we get these super HS, we get this fetch um node fetch but now axios now in me i they like the personality they use and in another video we could come with maybe use axios to make our lives much better uh but for this one we could just work with the, the follow com um, version or method which now the fetch api so i did my vs code now uh make we add our first file make we add our index.html so for this index HTML file, make we just say we want just uh, set up a quick boilerplate and make we just call this one, make we just say uh, say how to use uh fetch. Okay. Of course, now I'm not saying if you add our JavaScript here, but we don't want to I want to add a new file for our JavaScript. So I go first add my JavaScript. So I'm gonna say name because my JavaScript to work with, and then uh make we just console log something here. Just to check, say our JavaScript they work for us. Now, for inside our HTML, make we link our, our JavaScript. Uh, so we just say scripts, and uh, the script we will just set our src to the part of the file we we'll define, which is the main .js. Okay. Now, if we save this and we run our live server. We suppose get something for here and if you know they even use vs code get other ways if you install live server for our machine so if you don't want to see video about that one make you let me know for the comment section uh make we just click here go live this now wait me to find but we open the console and you see our hello world message for uh main.js if they work for us nice nice for them it check the console so now if they see all the code will they work with and uh everything they work for us nice nice for here right so make we enter back into our VS code, make we close this and close the HTML because we don't need them. All everything we're gonna do, we're gonna do them for inside here for today. Okay. Oh, before I even forget, make we say the API we want to work with, make I show now the API. The API we're gonna work with now. Hmm, make I first open up my browser. Uh you only go this site for here. It's called JSON placeholder. If you just Google JSON placeholder and then you go click this JSON uh 
placeholder.pipeco.com. Now, a fake API, you get many, many fake APIs we'll be saying if you use. So you get many fake information or fake data with the internet if you use. Uh, so you could just come here, down here, and now here you could see all the resources, whether they call them resources or data. You'll if you get many of them. Uh, uh, if you get polls, fake data, comments, fake data, albums, photos, uh, to dos and uh, users. So what we're going to work with today now the post, which now this first one. So if I click on, it's supposed to carry me go. I think I show you. It's supposed to carry me go this URL for here. Now all this data where you there here, this now the data we define, and this now JSON data. So normally this kind of data go to leave. It leave for internet, right? So now this data we want carry put for inside our application. So now now waiting with the try do with our fetch API. Just so now go understand where the data or the resources they come from. A day in internet, a day online, a day on a server. And what we want to be say we want pull that data, we want fetch that data. Sometimes we want move, move um update that data, we want delete that data, we want to do anything we want to do with this data with the here. Okay, so we could just come this side, typical, and this now the site where we're going to work with. So this now the end point where we're going to work with. So we call this the end point or the main, uh, uh, the base URL. So this now where we're going to get all the information. Nobody here, nobody this first site where we're going to work with, or nobody this typical.com. Make sure say now the slash post or slash comment or slash album. Now we're the adventurous after this video. Now we just try the other sites. Now we try working with the album. But for this one, we could just use the post and uh, then at this data here. So the post, you just say when I open up, you know, the open web website they open this uh json object for me they open up for me like this for here raw raw and then we could just paste this url for here first for now so what you want to be say uh make i just say this now our uh, make we just call them and what i want to be say we could just assign this endpoint to a variable because we're going to use them different times we're going to use them in different places you know understand so to do that we could just of course assign them to a variable because the fetch api they always expect a string yeah so we we'll just assign them to this string for here and say this now the base URL. Now so we're going to work with the base URL for here. Now what thing I want to do is say I want to call the fetch method. So I will say fetch and I want to fetch something. So remember say for inside our parentheses, I tell you now say it get one very important thing we're going to need to um, show for our fetch. All right, which now the URL where the fetch need. So this URL now this one we get for here, right? So we we'll just add them as our base url for here now this base url as we add it like this is supposed to give us the same information we get from that website it's supposed just this small line of code supposed to give us that so how we could take no make we just try console log something first so make i just say i want to wrap them inside the console.log because so i could just say um, console.log and make we just wrap them inside here and i could just wrap them there now if i don't like this you can see say we they get this pending Remember this pending um, uh, um, promise, and this promise is to say this promise object, it get a different thing inside. If I open up, you can see say it get the catch, it get the constructor, it get the final, it get the dot then. So all these things, we feel they attach all these methods to this our promise we 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 did for here. Meaning say now so we are going to take the work with these methods we did here. So just like the diagram where I shown now for the slides, you see say now it is show pending. And even though it don't resolve, it don't show this fulfilled for here. Meaning say our promise is don't finish, it's fulfilled, it's valid. So let's say Mongo typical.cc cc and I press save. You go see say now it don't give me this error for here. You know they valid. If we check our promise for here, you go see say it give us this rejected. You know they give us fulfilled again. Just like I showed you for that image, we say it go to go the fulfilled or they come the rejected. Okay. So then I'm waiting this promise they help us they do for you all where they work inside this fetch method where they here. Okay. So we don't do anything with them, even though we get this data, we just get a promise. So if I say, ah, wait, I want, I want to get the value now, why not show me all the value? Now that time, you're going to use the dot, the dot then method. Now that time, you go confit config chain now. So I could just say dot then. And this is a VS code, don't they suggest the available methods for me? So I could just say dot then. Because we don't get the response back, I could just say, I want the response. Okay. So I'll say res response. And this response, as we don't get them back, we won't come, let me just say, we won't come return response for now. And once we do it like this, we they get the response. But we know they see anything. Nothing they happen. Why? Nothing they happen for our code, even though we they come so long now. But then because it gives us this fetch, we they work with, it they return something back for us. It they return this response object for us. And this response object, it they give us all that objects to so work with. It they give us some nice helper objects. And this one's here. So if you just use them, they see whether it they okay or if you see um turn down to JSON or if you even do redirect, if you check the status, if you do anything, if you check the body, if you do anything when we want with these uh, methods, we our response they give us our response object they give us.
So what you want to be saying, but just convert them to JSON. That means we don't get a valid JSON object. But even though we check our console, we still don't see anything. Why we don't see anything? Well, simply because now we're in our object, we're going also need again to run another dot then on top of them. Then we're going to say dot then. And now inside this dot then by now, we don't get that data as JSON, remember? So we're going to say, we make it just say one data. And this data, make we call them because that part function with the function with the work with, make we work on return the data. So we'll say data. Okay, now if we don't like this now for here, we go suppose get the data. So, what I would like to say, I would like just console log the data. So, I'll just console log data. And if I press save for there for line seven, you can see we get this data for here. All right. So, if I if, if we check here inside our fetch, even though we did inside this console log, don't worry, it's not just something why they use the I will change this code now. But the idea is saying now we don't get all our information where we want, we don't get the use of all the data, we don't get all these things, and all this information if they come from the internet, you know, they come from my laptop, if they come from that website, that typical website where we checked before. Now, there, this information they come with. Make we say something happened for the code, and we don't have and we, we won't know whether the information they rejected or not. How will take Duam? Well, that's not why we get the dot catch. So, for this my code, I could say dot catch. Meanwhile, keep in mind, say you go fit just do it like this underneath. You don't need to do them directly on top of this one here. If you do them underneath here, that's not why it's more readable. It's they more readable like this than to the attach them one by one. Okay, so the dot catch method where we want to say we we go can't use them now to catch or any of the error where we get. You understand? So what we will say for inside this dot catch, we just say okay. Oh, if we get an error, oh sorry. We get an error as a parameter. We can use our path arrow function. We can say, okay, we'll console the log and give us the error message. I could just use one quick emoji for here just to show, say, my error we they get. So I could just say, um, either the message it go go like this or it go give us an error. So how we go take get that error? Make we try break this code again. This dot com. I could just come on the O for there. I go say, say now we get the error. Say Monique failed to fetch the data. Now we go like check if there's an error, and then if error they will make we handle that error. Say ah, now, so I take get the data only if I get the data, because this now um promise based method or because this now promise inside this dot then we first um create a block. Remember, say we they use this um what's the column? We they use this our braces our curly brace so they create a block like a function. So we can say okay, well, for inside this block, what we want to be say we want to check or we want to write an if statement. So we go say if. And I'm gonna just do that there. I'm gonna say if the response uh dot okay. I don't know if you can see the dot okay here, right? You see this dot okay. So this will return us boolean value, whether not true or not false, if the information they correct, or if you see that information. So we go say if boolean, okay, if um response to okay, if it is that, if we say it they okay, then we won't uh, make we just say we won't come return. Then we can return that old value where we get before, which now the response dot JSON. Only if the information they okay. Otherwise, if you know they okay, then we no one return anything. If you know they okay, it could just ignore this step. Only it could just ignore this step. It could just enter straight into this our error for here. So make we see, say we could just console log something. So we'll just console log a message just to let us know, say uh it they work. Make I just add a emoji for here. If we save this code like this and we run it, it will still give us the error. They look here, it will give us error if not red, not error if not green, not pass. And remember, say we just command this code, we don't break this post. So we'll just change that to, sorry, not zero. <laughs> we'll just change that to dot com. And you're supposed to give us, say, got data, and then it will list out the information for us for there. If you notice, say, by default, we just not even write the word get inside our code. Why? Because the fetch method by default, it they always perform a get by default. Unless, say, we can't specify, say, we won't perform other kind of operation now when i want to be say to access this information when i delay how to code that time i'm mean, struggle with them i you know say oh okay now i don't get this information but how i want to take access now how i want to take user how i want to consume this data where i work with then how we could just make we just create a small helper function so one way we say we want to create a small helper function we're going to help us today to the just the console log our data uh where we work with so if we just say we want to create a function and I don't need to do this, but this is not just for example uh, use case. So I could just call out show data, for example. Okay. And this data, this one is going to take some sort of data from the server. So if you just call out server uh, data. Okay. 
So this function, they accept a server data, and then we could just need pass that server data, whatever data we will work with, uh, we could just need pass that into this show data function. All right, so that's not what we want to do for here. So just when we get that function, we could just say we want to console log that data uh, we will work with for here. Whatever data we pass in here, we just want to print them out. So this show data, we're going to call them um, for around here. So once we know, the thing is saying, once you don't convert this data for here, at that time we're going to pass in this data, right? And at that time we're going to call that data. So if you just say show data, and this show data, we're just passing the data that we want, right? So written at the data we will get from the internet, and this is it, it will work exactly the same. And it shows say array of data, which is what we get for here. Okay, so then how this function they work. Now, if you feel the one that say why we need this kind of function and the big and all those kind of things. So, what I want to be say, uh, we know suppose the console just the console log this data. What I want to be say, I want to wrap them in like a function. So, make I just say, and this get data function is supposed to take in a parameter. Like I tell you now, say every uh, fetch method, it needs a URL. So instead of calling it base URL, we could just call a URL for now. And this URL, so anytime we they use this, our uh, get data, we're going to pass in a URL into RAM. So we just want to say uh, fetch. Oh, sorry. Rather, we just want to copy, uh, come on this code. We can just cut and come on from the console log. And we could just push on inside here and delete that one. So we get this function, we're supposed to run this get data, and we'll pass them in a URL. So we'll change this base URL to URL, okay? So we'll just say get data, and then we'll just call them with base URL. We did read the data, okay? So then I'm going to do, make a just put for uh, brackets here and say read, so make I just come out this console, um, this message. And make I say now, what you want to be say, we want to create a data. And of course, I tell them, I tell them, I say, to create a data, we're going to create a post request. And that post request, make I put up here, it helps us to create the data on a server, okay? We want to make our code just they broken into functions. Remember, say I told you that say one they use like functions so that if they call those functions anyhow, then how uh, we they use this kind of thing. So uh, make I come up this out first. Okay, so we could just create a function, and this function we could just call um uh, post data, right? Because now what we want to do so we say post data, and then this post data of course it just collect the URL just like the same one, but the difference between this one whenever we call the fetch method. We're going to need to pass out some other parameters. So we we'll go first pass in the URL. So unlike the other get uh, request, we we'll say we we'll just pass the URL. It they take an option. Okay. So every fetch request, they always take an option. So if you pass an option, which now the an object. Okay. So now what we want to say, we want to do option for inside here and press uh, controls and space bar. You'll get these other options for the say we feel use. So I work on run our fetch method with this option. And the option we define now the method. We will then give up a string. So the string will be defined now the post. That now the method we want. So remember, say we want the post method. So now this post method will come let our fetch method know say, oh, okay, this person won't create new information. So because now object we want, so you're gonna need to put your comma and then make we now add the information where we want to put. All right, check here. You can see say we get the body. This body object, it will help us to add everything where we want for this our code. So we're gonna say body, this body it will collect text basically. So that's why we're gonna need to make a string. All right. We won't form the information where we want. At that time we go copy now use the JSON way JavaScript don't give us. So we're gonna say JSON. Or inside this JSON, we they either pass JSON, then I translate JSON, or we they stringify. JSON, then I transform them into string. And once we stringify this JSON like this for here, then you can pass in an object here. Now, this object, now our information will be defined. Gang, 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 gang. So remember, say that time when we call that other function, it get the way the information they show. So if I say, make we just call this function again, which we call them, we call them post uh, get data. So we say uh, get data, and then we just pass in our base URL. And once we done like this, it's supposed to uh, console or something, right? So once we call that uh, method here, you go see, say, make we check the information. You go see, as the information takes structure itself. So you get the body, you get the ID, you get the title, you get the uh, user ID for here. Now, that information when we get for there, now we go like put for inside here the same structure, except maybe with the ID, because now the ID, you know, the, uh, we got the auto increment the ID and all that kind of stuff. So now we, now we go add that this ID, gang, 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 because the ID is now this one's here, and the user ID is now this one's here, which they different, okay? So maybe we work in with this one. And then what we want to say, now here we want to add our title. So we could just add the title first, now object. So make we just uh, arrange this code small, okay? And this title, what we want to do for the title, make we just add a string. We want to also add a body, 
Because remember, so we get the body, and that body, you know, with this body for here, that body now, this one, that and the body of this text, and now this one here, that and this body here, this uh, text where they say for here, where did the internet, we want to create our own text where did the internet also. So we we'll just say, like we add the last one, we'll go like add, which now, uh, user ID. So the user ID, they come from here, remember? User ID, now four for here, you know, with this ID where they here. The user ID will be fine because now number, they could just put the number five. For them by the way this object where they hear like this we suppose we they able to pass them as a parameter into this our post data so that it could be an object where you could expect and whenever we pass that object where we go don't format like this as this highlighted text they hear that that time go carry this information you got to put that information that's so good to do now we don't get the data but they work with right but what you mean you get one more thing we're going to do and that's not the header the headers now where we could put the information where the server they understand for us so this headers it is taking an object and the object now content so i'm going to say content dash type i'm going to set the content type to uh because now, now json we will set them to of course uh application and make sure say you spell them right slash json then I'm waiting the server they expect from us. And another thing we're gonna to do, sorry, I cannot put that there. Another thing we're gonna do now here, we're gonna to need to also add the characters. Character set, that's chat set. If you now remember the HTML side of the video, we had already explained all this uh, UTF-8 for us. So you can just say UTF-8, that I mean say the server could come translate and understand this text where they collect for here. So, okay. And then I can just put this down here. For here, if we get that information with the work with, right? Remember, say I tell them and say if we attach a dot then method to now. Well, then I wait we go do for here now. So I could just come out this one here, that's um semicolon, and then we just say dot then. But inside here, we don't get that information with the work with. Okay, so if you just say we want a response, um, then I this response. So if you just say we want a response, and this response is supposed to return something for us. So I could just say response, return it back to JSON, okay. And then we could just call that uh, method for there. All right. And now make we just see whether we fit console log something else. So we just say post data. And then we could just call them out. Make we pass in the base URL. And once we pass in that base URL, uh, we could just console log uh, the value out. But then, uh, so now remember, say we don't get that data where they work with, but we also want to see the data. So we could just say, instead of seeing the data, make we just call our helper function with the show data. And then we just pass in that data. Okay, the data will really get as a uh, parameter for there. And this is it now, whatever information will be passed in here, nine, we could they add to our database or our server. So then how we feel they take, they create data. Remember, say it don't even help us assign this ID. This is basically now most of the things where you will need to do. But what if you want to update something for the server? How you go take one? So maybe we try work on the post method. So we just say to do a put rather, not the post method, but the put method, uh, but the put method, what if we want to say it help us the update. They create our functions so just like before, but we just create a function. And this function, we could just call them um, put, put data. Remember, say when I use this function anywhere, so we say uh, takes in the URL, we could just call this put uh, for here. So we say put data, and then we just call them um, for here and pass in our base URL, just so that we're going to trigger that function um, before we start to work with them. So just like before, so what I go like to say, I could just like copy or duplicate this code ready here because I don't really lazy. So we we'll just copy this whole code ready here. So we'll just copy here and then I will just paste them. Now, what you want to be say, we go like way, we say if we change that data. Make we say we want first change the uh, method to put. And this put method, that means that now will tell or say, oh, we won't put something inside them. So you see, say we get this error. That means say, oh, it never gets any information for us for here. Because we get this error for here, we're going to need to change the URL where we work with. Because the URL don't know where we they go. Okay, and remember, say the data we want change now only data for a specific information, meaning like a specific rule or what we we want to only this one. We don't want to change the data for all the other ones because nobody we want we want change only the data for a specific rule, a specific user. Now we want to work with for here. So to do that, we could just say okay, well, as we don't pass in this URL for here, we could try change the text for here. So we could just say. Uh, Remember, say we define specific user, that means say we define the ID, we define that ID of that user. Okay, so now if you just pass in that ID, 
of the user so we'll say oh okay well, any user we get this id and if you just take an uh, id parameter when we get for that then at this id where i say did they help us the auto increment we're gonna need to know that id right we're gonna need to know say oh you get id one you get id 100 and you get id this so we'll say id one because we won't change that id right we won't change that user that block that information so we'll say oh the user where they inside or the information where they inside id one no oh, i won't change alone but you see say we see they get this error but that's because we never add the id because if you check them we're gonna need the path to that id all right so if you see the url the url will say i can just control now for here once you are aware show us the base url make we come out this other methods for here uh we don't want to post anymore uh make we see which other one we want we make we minimize this one make we collapse down like that and then make we just come out this data here also so if you say we want to do uh, a fetch and won't get only that user, say we won't get that specific one user. Let me show you a very good example. If you just call our, I remember I said I'll get data, it helps list all the data. But we'll say we want the base URL and this base URL, where we defined, we want only the specific one. So we'll just say base URL. But what I want to say, I want to put them inside a string and I want to just wrap them inside some uh, template literal for here and i could just access the code from here so i want the information on the base url but i want that slash the user id so i want only the one with the id number one okay so now it will give me only that information where they only the id number one remember saying i want 100 so if i say i want id 30 it will give me only the user with the id of 30 this is the id day here inside 30 nobody this user id or this id with the here if i say i want user 200 it will say you not get any user of 200 so if i say 200 for here it will give me an error i say hey oh girl, i don't get 200 user but you see the way the url the form is set for here that means maybe they try Target only that specific user where they here. So make we work with user one for here or one. We won't get one get one user, but we won't update only that one user information. So make we come on this uh, URL for here, and then make we just uh, print that one out. So we suppose to get that error message, and for here for inside where we they call this URL. Remember, so we don't pass that URL. We won't just paste that code in there. So waiting one to say it gonna give us the post. It gonna give us the base URL and uh we're going to work with that base url and then go put them slash that id we want to work with but because we they work inside the function what we go like do we say we're going to like make them more dynamic so we go like pass in that value for here which is not the url so whatever url will be passed into here we go just do a slash that id what we want so if i say again i want id 20 it could give me the, the information for only user with the ID of that user now 30, now 20. And it will change the text, it will change all the text. So if you check them out now, instead of all that French when they write before, they help us write, say, we change the data on this side for the user with the ID now only 20. And here now the title will be changed, and here now the ID will be give the person. So all that information where will they pass now in the here. Now you get one specific information where no supposed they here because I they change this ID for here. Okay, you know they you know make sense because I did try to change them and it's not changing. Now that now here we get that bug. Okay, so how we go take fix this bug? We're gonna pause the video, we're gonna think for like one minute how we feel fix that bug. Because here we they use the ID of 20, but here we they use the ID of one. So simple, all we need to do is say we go like where maybe say whatever value they here now, now it will be the value we go they here. Okay, so if you change that ID for here, so whatever value will be the passing here, now we're going to pass in here. Okay, so this is our function now. If we take in another parameter or an ID, so we could just say we want passing an ID. So whenever they call this put method, though, make it take an ID. So for here, we could just say because we this template literal, we just say slash, and we could do our dollar sign and call it brace, and then we could just say we want passing an ID for here. So now whatever ID will be passed into now, now I'm going to work with. Okay, let's keep that in mind. And then for here also, we could just say ID for here. Because we did not like this, we're going to get this error. And that error, to fix this error, what we will see for here? You see, we get the syntax error. Then here, we will come put the code where we want, and then at the ID. So whatever ID where we get for our server, now we want. So if we want the ID of one now, it will come help us uh, um, go for only the user with the ID now one. The reason why we call them as a function, if you just even call them three more times, so I could just duplicate this code. If you just say uh, ID 5 and ID uh, 60, you will see, say, it they give me three so it they give me three of this information it they make three requests it they make the they call the fetch request three times and they call them for this id they call them for this one they call them for this one so make we clean this off we'll make we just do the last one we want for here and the last one we want now to they delete the information we get so 
Okay, so now we're going to use the delete step. So just like before, so we just call our function and we could just call this function the delete data. And this delete data, because now function we want, make we just say we won't call our fetch inside them. Okay, so we're not going to just say because we're lazy, we could just copy the same thing uh, just like before. Make we use our, yes, make we use this one and we could just clean the code up. I was copy the whole thing and paste them in here. And then make we just clean this whole thing up. So we'll say uh, we want to clean all the data up onto the method where we want. So we'll just clean up, up onto here, this method. Okay. And then we'll just change the method name to uh, delete. So we'll say delete. Okay. So now this will help us delete the data. So we'll make we say if that data don't delete, we want to show say, oh, okay, well, we don't delete something. So we'll make we say we want a function. Oh, sorry, not an array. So I say one. We could call the function, so we say delete data, and then we're just passing whatever URL we want, which is not the base URL we want. So we we'll go down there and go we'll delete that data for us. But we also want to make this you are make it take this delete, make it take in a URL, and then make it take in an ID because we want to delete only a specific user. One, no one delete everything. So one delete only that specific user. So because we don't put any ID for here, then now we get this empty array for here. Of course, it goes to delete something, and then we we'll just pass in the uh, ID where we want, right? So we we'll just say um, the ID we want now uh, user one. And of course, if we do, um, it is supposed to maybe just tell ourselves, say, oh, just like we did before, we we'll just wrap them inside our block, and then we we'll just paste them there. So uh, we could we'll just pass an if statement to say if uh, response dot okay um let me say status so if the response or the status now equals to 200 then we want to do something so we want to return this value so let's say return this value so we will return the json object if it equals to 200 okay if not we will say something so we could just console log uh a message we could just tell us say uh deleted okay we want a string that says uh deleted so now so we they take arrange all our information and so we they work with crud operations for here um if we call any of these functions anyhow we want them remember say this is not fake database where we and a fake api where we work with so these informations where they see here no they really save on the server so it could be good to practice make sure that they use all these functions they take practice make sure that they try to the, um, extend these functions or they even improve these functions with time and they learn the practice sense because many of your job interviews they're going to ask you say okay we'll make it they work they get information with this many of your clients also they go feel one day collect information from other websites or other services and you're going to need to know all these functions uh all these um, fetch methods and all that to the work with them all right so i hope say when i enjoy this video but for now that's all we need to learn i'll see you now for the next video thank you